Um, I am going to do the <laughs> mid-year book freakout tag. Um, I've not been tagged by anyone, but um, I saw a bunch of people do it, and it's really fun, and I haven't done tag in a really, really long time. I have been tagged in some things, and I do plan on doing those tags, and I just saw that Doris, um, I just watched a little bit of the video, but it looks like she created her own like vlog tag, so I am planning on doing that. Um, but anyways, it is halfway through the year, so I figured I would do this. Um, this little baby hair is driving me crazy. Um, all right, so the first question is the best book you've read so far in 2019, um, and for that, I am going to pick Severance. Um, this was kind of a hard pick for me. I went through and I looked at all the books that I've read so far this year, and I've read quite a few things. I've read um, like 60, 61 things, um, and I really, really loved a lot of them. I think most of my books are three and a half to four and a half stars, but there's not a lot of five star reads. Um, so there's some other books that I really enjoy that I'm going to obviously talk about later because they fit into other prompts. Um, but I feel like with regards to enjoyment level and like meaningfulness, that book has kind of everything. And I just think it's, I just think it's absolutely brilliant. And if you haven't read it, uh, you should read it. Uh, the second question is the best sequel you've read so far in 2019, um, and for that I'm picking Monstrous. Uh, I just absolutely love it. I am hopefully inserting clips of things here because I am too lazy to take books off my shelves, which is the main reason why I don't typically do tags. Um, for some reason, editing a picture is easier than like physically scouring my shelves. Um, but yeah, I think that the artwork is fantastic. The story is like really strong and magical. It is a little convoluted <laughs> and like, uh, you know, there's a lot of different parts going on, but in general, I just think it's so much fun and I'm really excited for number four to come out, um, which will be who knows when. Um, number three is new release you haven't read yet, but want to. Um, the only thing that I have for that is Mostly Dead Things by... Kristen Arnett. Um, I don't buy new releases. The only new releases that I get are for my indispensable subscription boxes, and that is the most recent one that I have gotten, and that is why I'm saying that book, but I really don't care about that kind of stuff at all. Um, so for number four, most anticipated release for the second half of the year, I don't have one because I don't know what comes out, and I literally do not care. <laughs> um, number five is Biggest Disappointment. See you. For me, that would have to be Little Women. However, I kind of didn't think I was going to like it. So this is this is hard because I feel like Biggest Disappointment means like you're kind of anticipating or expecting something and your dreams are not fulfilled. Um, I had an inkling that I wasn't going to get on with Little Women because... I am not the type of person that likes sweet things. I never have been. I've always really liked dark things and dark endings. Like I, my favorite horror movies are the ones where everybody gets killed. Specifically when like there's a survivor and they think that they've survived and then they get killed at the end. I just think it's really, really funny because, you know, whatever. Uh, so I don't think it's 100% fair to label that my biggest disappointment because I had, I had suspicions that I wasn't going to enjoy it. So I guess the other one that I, so I, I picked like also a second one that is more, I think of a disappointment, which is the lovely bones. Um, just because it was so bad. Like it was unbelievably bad. <laughs> Little women. I can appreciate because I think that it does what it's supposed to do. And it is perfect for the people that enjoy that. Like, I think that it is a well done kids book that is like really nice and cute, I guess. But The Lovely Bones, I just think was just not well written. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's, I just hated that book so much. Uh, so we'll go with that one, I guess. Um, the next one is Biggest Surprise. And for that, I've picked Akata Witch by Nettie Okorafor. This was so much fun. Um, I had some issues with it, of course, because I am pickier than I thought I was, I guess. But in general, I am not a YA reader or kids book reader or like children's book except for I am going back and rereading my goosebumps but in general I'm not a huge fan of children's lit or YA and I absolutely loved this and I thought it was so great and it made me really happy because the main character uh I think her name's Sunny but I don't really remember because I read it a bit ago um she's kind of like <laughs> I don't know what the way to put it is but I, I feel a lot of uh 
compassion and like I see a lot of myself in her because I feel like she's a little bit more like straight laced and doesn't like to get in trouble and like all that kind of stuff and I, I really enjoyed that and just enjoy the book in general I thought it was wonderful and I should get the second book in the series actually now that I'm thinking about it and read that um, number seven is favorite new author and for that I've picked Sayaka Murata who wrote Convenience Store Woman which is what I'm thinking I pretty sure that is translated so I will like that or write that here somewhere. Um, I just thought Convenience Store Woman it was so good. Um, really disjointed narrator, like very apart from the world. And I like, I just, you know, I thought that she wrote that very, very well. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what else she writes. I don't know if she has written anything else. I guess I don't like her enough to have searched that, but to be fair, I do have lots of books that I need to read that are on my shelves. Um, so yeah, I'm very interested in reading more um, books by this author. Um, newest fictional crush and newest favorite character. I have nothing for that. I have only one fictional crush, and that is Ron Weasley from Harry Potter. I can't picture myself ever having a crush on another person in a book. Like, that's you know. Um, number 10 is book that made you cry and then in parentheses the saddest book you have read. Uh, this was also really hard. I usually cry a lot in general when I read and I feel like a lot of things make me cry. Um, so I'm, I have two picks for this also. One of them is Heavy. Um, I thought that book was so touching, so moving, and very, very sad. Like he has gone through a lot of hard things in his life and I just thought that it was really well done and I feel like I got emotional during it but I don't like remember maybe outright crying and the other book that I have is totally different and it's Stephen Florida and um I just feel like the main character Stephen I don't Stephen Florida is not even his real name he has enough his his real name is something else and I just can't remember what it is because it's like barely mentioned um but he just makes me feel like really like bad and depressed <laughs> and sad I just he's a sad human being that is like the kind of sad person that does horrible things and is like not a nice person but I can see like the sadness behind his character and it like really hurt a lot and I I, I really appreciated that um, number 11 is book that made you happy and for that I have uh, <laughs> Come Madre um, which is by Roque La something oh boy yeah, I don't know where it is. Uh, that is also translated. I will write that here. Um, this book made me really, really happy, which is messed up because it's all about scientists trying to decapitate people, and they're de trying to, they're succeeding. They're, you know, getting people that are put in this institution to basically sign away their life for research to do these de decapitations. And I just think it's really funny, and it made me happy because I thought it was so weird. Sorry, uh, <laughs> I don't know why I'm apologizing. I am who I am. Deal with it. <laughs> um, all right, the next question or prompt is favorite book to film adaptation you saw this year? Um, and this was really hard because I don't care about this kind of stuff. I don't watch adaptations. I, I mean, at least I don't like make an effort to do it. So um, I saw two movie adaptations technically this year so far. One is The Little Hours, which is an adaptation of, oh my gosh, The Decameron? Is that the name of the book? I think that's it by Giovanni something or other. This is why one should do research before they make films, or make films, make videos. Um, and technically, I did not read, I think it's the Decameron. The, yeah. Uh, I technically, I did not read that, but I did read a short, um, there is a, a few a few of the stories in one of the Penguin Little Black Classics called um, Rosie and the Priest, I think. And I adored that and I really need to read that book. But I did I did see that movie, which is technically, it's like a loose interpretation, adaptation of the book. Um, and then I also watched Murder on the Orient Express, which I thought was absolute garbage. So if we have to pick one, it's obviously The Little Hours, even though I still didn't love The Little Hours. I thought it was really funny, but it was fine. Um, however, I did read Bridget Jones' The Edge of Reason this year, and I had previously seen the movie, so I'm going to kind of count that, even though technically that is not what happened. Um, 
But yeah, so I thought that was just fine and fun. Bridget Jones does what Bridget Jones is supposed to do, and it's always a good time. Um, I probably, now that I'm thinking about it, would like to rewatch those movies. Um, number 13 is favorite review you've written this year for BookTube, favorite video you've done so far this year. I'm going to say none of them because all of my videos are me just talking. There's nothing. I don't, I'm not like the popped mist or, you know, whomever. Like, I, I'm not... I'm not one of those people that is really well prepared and planned and thought out. I just am talking to y'all in my living room. Uh, so none because they're all the same. And then uh, number 14 is most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received. And uh, for that, I'm picking Halal If You Hear Me, which is a poetry anthology. And I just think the cover is phenomenal. Um, the two ladies on the front are perfect. It's spectacular. And number 15, what books do you need to read by the end of this year? Oh my gosh. What a great question. Um, I don't need to, but I would like to read all of these books because all of these books are books that I have started and have not finished, including Les Mis down there and The Luminaries is back here somewhere. And... Oh, and an autobiography of Malcolm X. Basically, I would like to finish the books that I'm in the middle of, which is what I always say, but I keep just starting new books instead, so classic. Um, yeah, if you've, read any, if you've read any of these books and have anything you would like to say about them, please comment below. Um, if you're going to try to convince me about Little Women or The Lovely Bones, though, don't even bother because it's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.